North America's oldest road race is back in business. Today, the sounds of NASCAR engines take over the streets of Trois-Rivières, Quebec. In 1967, the automobile club Mauricien decided to put on a street race in the picturesque city of Trois-Rivières. For the next 50 plus years, it's taken shape as one of the premier motorsports venues in North America. For the past dozen years, the stars of NASCAR have headlined this tricky, tight 11-turn circuit. The event, respected by all, feared by many, is a lot like a short track bull ring. To finish here, you have to be tough. To finish first, you got to be tough, fast, and lucky. The road to the Pinty's Championship starts now. Welcome to NASCAR Pinty Series Racing on TSN. We're at the Grand Prix of Trois-Rivières for the third race of the season, the Guardian Angels 60, presented by Dermatair. Hello, I'm Dave Bradley, along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. Adam, it was a huge undertaking, but the organizers here have managed to battle and finally got the 2021 edition of the country's oldest street race back to the green flag. Dave, Dominic Fougere and his team have done an amazing job putting together Canada's largest motorsport event in COVID times. Not an easy task. Not at all. And the NASCAR Pinty Series is the headliner. Other races include the Nissan Sentra Cup, Formula 1600, and the Chevrolet Urban Challenge. Dave, what a cool deal is this. Dirt modified sportsman cars racing here on the street course. These cars are normally campaigned on dirt oval tracks. They don't turn left and right in the same race, but they're hugely popular in Quebec. Draw a ton of cars out for GP3R this weekend. They even drew Ron Fellows, Canadian Motorsport Hall of Famer, out of retirement to compete. And this was a really fun race to watch, which was won by Francois Belmar from right here in Trois-Rivières. And we mentioned Ron Fellows, who's here to support his son Sam's first efforts in a NASCAR Pinty Series ride. Yeah, Sam takes over the number 98 curb records entry. Chantel Kalika drove the car in the opening two events at Sunset Speedway. Sam's going to run the rest of the season behind the wheel of that race car. It's a huge opportunity for Sam. Yeah, lots of new faces as well. Road racing ace Kyle Marcelli, one of the country's most prominent road course racers, will be in a Dave Jacobs Ford. And J.F. Dumoulin returns to race with his brother. Also piloting a Dumoulin Competition Dodge is L.P. Montour, a veteran sports car racer. Two LPs on the same team. That's not going to be confusing. No, not at all. Of course, Ray Jr. Cordemage returns to the series after a six-year hiatus. He'll be running an Ed Hackinson racing entry. So lots of new faces. And with more on how E3 spark plug qualifying went, let's go down to top. Guys, yes, we had a spirited qualifying session yesterday. One of the fastest drivers in the qualifying session was the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. However, the session came to an end early when you had a little bit of contact with the wall. How was the car and how do you feel about today? Uh, well, the car is not 100%, that's for sure. Uh, we're not allowed to change every parts on the car, but uh, we repaired uh, the car just as we could, uh, the best we could. And uh, you know, we feel, still feel confident. Uh, the car was very, very fast in practice. We were uh, uh, following uh, Dumoulin uh, uh, with old tires you know, on longer sessions and we were quicker. So now he's on pole, so we're lo looking good for the race, but uh, we'll see what, you know, how the car feels like on the track. Good luck today, Kevin. Thank you. All right, Kevin Lacroix will be one of the challengers. As we mentioned, it was a spirited qualifying session, and it also brought us a brand new track record here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. The two-time winner here in the streets of his hometown was LP Dumoulin, posted the quickest time during qualifying with a 106.7. Congrats on the new track record. How do you take one good lap and turn it into 60 today? Yeah, that's going to be a big challenge for that weather tech, Benmar, uh, some of that car, but... Um that's you know that's what we worked on during practice yesterday we were uh working in the quality runs as well as on the long run stuff and uh i think we were pretty pleased with what we had in the car and the team did a really good work on uh, making sure that we have good brakes for the whole run too um it's totally got grand prix super happy to see the fans in the stands i uh, see them all you know respecting the situation uh but being here and then cheering that that means a lot for us you know it's been two years now and uh, of course, we want to do well at Dumoulin competition. We have uh, JF and uh, LP Montour that we want on the podium as well. So I think it's going to give a very good show to the fans because there's a lot of very good drivers, a lot of very good cars, and I'm very excited about it. Good luck today. 
Yes, LP sir. Dumoulin is trying to make it back to back victories here at the Grand Prix de Trois Rivières. As mentioned, there are a lot of fast cars, including the 22 of Marc Antoine Cameron, who is alongside on the front row, the 51 of Andrew Ranger, also third quickest. Alex Tagliani went back out late during the qualifying session. He was sitting sixth. He bumped it up to fourth. DJ Kennington in the Castrol car, consistent once again. And Kyle Marcelli in the seven, his first time in a NASCAR Pinty's car, also the first time here at the Grand Prix de Trois Rivières. He posted the eighth quickest time. And Trayton Lapsovich, the Rookie of the Year candidate in the number 20 for 22 racing. You've been perhaps the busiest race car driver this weekend. You started here in Trois Rivières yesterday. Take me through your journey that took you back to Ontario yesterday. Yeah, after qualifying yesterday at uh, Trois Rivières here, we flew back to Barrie, Ontario. Uh, to run the APC series at Sunset Speedway. Uh, after the race the last night there, we, uh, we drove overnight and we, I think we rolled in here at about 6.30 this morning. And how did you do in the race last night and what do you expect to happen today? Uh, I was ninth last night. We had a really good car come from 23rd there. Uh, just some unlucky cautions didn't quite play in my favor. Um, today, I, my goal was really just to make it to the end, uh, run some good laps, stay out of trouble trouble and, and gain some experience around these guys. Good luck today. Thank you. That's Trayton Lapsovich, Rookie of the Year contender. Guys, lots of youthful experience and exuberance. He'll be fresh and ready to go today. Dave Sherry Lapsovich is the consummate racing mom. Talk to her at Sunset Speedway where, where she was getting ready for Trayton to make it back. She was more nervous about the flight than her son driving race cars in two different venues this weekend. When we come back, we'll take you to green from the Guardian Angels 60. The 51st running of the Grand Prix of 20 Deer on TSN is brought to you by Fast Eddie Speedwear, combustion culture collection available at fasteddiespeedwear.com. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By General Tire, the exclusive tire of the NASCAR Pinty Series. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. It is time to go racing on the streets of Trois Rivières. Let's send it trackside for today's command from Lawrence Vincent Lapointe, Canadian Olympian. Un modèle de résilience, un modèle pour nos jeunes. Laurence, la parole est à vous. Trois Rivières vous accueille. Merci beaucoup. J'ai une chose à dire. Pilote, lancez vos moteurs. Drivers, start your engines. You can hear the cheers from the crowd, the sounds they've been waiting to hear from the streets of Trois-Rivières, Quebec, as the engines fire. LP Dumoulin going to have the best seat in the house to start this one, the inside of row number one. I love the throwback of Marc Antoine Cameron. That's, that's an old school looking Scott Steckley 22 in the door section. And we'll have a number of onboard cameras. We're going to welcome back Ray Jr. Cordemange behind the wheel of the number eight, as you mentioned, racing into the EHR stable with Jason Hathaway as his crew chief here today. Some of the best help you can find, Dave. Let's have a look at four racers here at GP3R. Andrew Ranger, LP Dumlin, Kevin Lacroix, and Alex Tagliani. They have 10 of the 13 wins. 13 races contested here. There's 10 of them on your screen. Yeah, definitely four drivers we're going to be watching over the course of 60 laps here today as the field starts to roll, getting some heat in their general tires, and they will find their starting spots. But 60 laps different than any other year here at the Grand Prix de 20 Vier as well. So we take a look at your E3 spark plug starting lineup. LP Dumoulin, Mark Antoine Cameron make up row number one. Need to look back to Andrew Ranger, Alex Tagliani, row two. Bunch of heavy hitters at the front. They don't get much lighter. JF Dumoulin in the 04. The 74 is Kevin Lacroix in row three. Row number four, DJ Kennington in the 17. And we welcome Kyle Marcelli behind the wheel of the number seven. Row number five is where we find the youngster Trayton Lapsovich alongside Alex Gannett in the 52. Row six has Simone Zion Vienne making his first start of 2021 and points leader Raphael Lassar. To the seventh row, LP Montour in the 07 and the 25 is Luke Lesage. To the eighth row, Dexter Stacy in the 92 and Larry Jackson in the 84. Solid field of cars here today. Brett Taylor to the inside of row number nine. Mark Dilley to his outside in the 64. And then row number 10 has Ray Cordemosh Jr. and Sam Fellows in the 98. To the 11th row, Jocelyn Fecto in the 77. TJ Renamato in the two. 
in a row 12, J.F. LaBerge in the 19. Should mention that uh, T.J. Renamato had some issues in qualifying, backing it into the tire wall in turn number one. Crew did a good job getting that car repaired, and he will make the start here today. You can see the drivers scrubbing these cars back and forth, trying to get heat into the general tires as we look at one of the many onboards. And let's check out the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. As we mentioned, 60 laps is longer than any other race distance here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières, and that means pit stops, a mandatory pit stop that must be taken before lap 50. And it's going to be a quick stop. It is fuel only. You won't see them putting on tires. It takes time. They don't have that time. They've got to get in, get enough fuel to get to the end, and head back onto the racetrack. It's not a huge amount. Most drivers talking about a quick splash. They're going to be in and out, but eliminating those mistakes on pit lane will also be a challenge. Great view for the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. He's a favorite. We're still trying to get the 22 car into victory lane on a road course without Scott Steckley behind the wheel. Pretty surprising it hasn't been there. And Mark Antoine Cameron will be one of the drivers to watch. Let's go back down, check in with Todd one more time. Guys, a couple of things to watch as we get set for green. The 74 team of Kevin Lacroix worked late last night and early this morning to make repairs from his qualifying crash. They believe they're good. They won't know until they make a few laps at speed. Also, the 18 of Alex Tagliani. They have had gremlins in the motor that they have been chasing for weeks. They made a lot of changes yesterday. They believe they are okay, but he's been having troubles with straight line speed. Will he have it today? We're about to find out. It's this moment, though, that fans start to feel their heart race a little bit. The anticipation building. 60 laps for the Guardian Angels 60 presented by Dermaterm on the streets of Trois-Rivières, Quebec. A concrete jungle for the NASCAR Pinty Series here for race number three of 11 in the 2021 season. And we're green. Almost contact down into turn number one. LP Dumlin sliding up the racetrack a little to get a better entry into turn one. He's going to lead the way clean for turn two. Cameron getting a good run, but there's Andrew Ranger and Alex Tagliani side by side. On board Alex Gannett through the Duplessis gates. That's turn number three. And Ranger and Lacroix managed to make it through there side by side. Not often you could say that. No, the opening lap, we see that quite a bit. It's chaos down into turn three. You won't see that again today except on restarts. It's really not a common move as we see Andrew Ranger drive it deep inside J.F. Dumont. He wasn't going to wait. He fell back a number of spots because of being jammed to the outside in turn three, but he came right back strong in turn six. You can't afford to give up any positions on a start or on a restart. Everyone is so good. I don't care who you're looking at in the top ten. Under green flag conditions, all of these drivers are very, very hard to pass. You take advantage on the restarts. Good look at the lead already built up by the WeatherTech Dodge of L.P. Dumoulin, who stood on the top step of the podium the last time the NASCAR Pinty Series raced here in 20 Vier. That was way back in 2019. As a matter of fact, the Pinty Series hasn't been out of Ontario since 2019. Last time they were in Quebec, same as Stash. It's fair to say the team of the Dumoulin competition racing team is the most successful NASCAR Pinty Series team ever to be housed out of Quebec, and they're right here in Trois-Rivières. This is a keystone event for them. Man, there's celebrities on these streets as well. If you ever walk around with L.P. Dumoulin, you might as well just keep walking because he's going to stop and talk to a number of fans along the way. Mark Antoine Cameron under attack by Alex Tagliani. Kevin Lacroix hanging in there. A slight gap back to Andrew Ranger in that new look, that purple 51. A gorgeous race car. Easy to spot on the racetrack for sure. And now we ride on board with Kevin Lacroix on the bumper to bumper dodge. Now you can see the lines on the front windscreen of Kevin Lacroix's car. Obviously a defroster. Normally you see that on your back window on your street car. They have it on the front windows in the event of rain. And when it rains, a race car is so hot. You're driving an oven with tires on. <laughs> so when you get the rain and you get that humid air and so much heat, the windows fog up terribly. So it is easier to see through those lines on the windshield than it is to combat the fog that would be all over it without those lines. 
Down this back straightaway one more time. You see Lacroix tucked into the toe of Alex Tagliani. Pokes his nose out, hazes the tires hard under braking. Not quite there to make a move. That's an interesting braking zone because it does have a couple bumps just as the drivers are getting onto the brakes. And I asked Kevin Lacroix about that before this race and I said is that a surprise and he says no I just sort of push harder and softer on the pedal as we go through there Ooh, Kyle Marcelli missed the corner there a little bit I don't think anyone will be able to make a move but I mean he's still learning because when you come from sports car racing or, or any other type of racing these cars are going to be more of a handful than anything you've driven. They don't slow down very well. They don't turn very well compared to a sports car. It takes a lot of, of muscle, a lot of willpower to get these cars around the racetrack. Marcelli's done a great job to figure it out. But as we said, miss that turn a bit. Watch Lacroix. He's not going to miss right there at the apex. Think about the apex on a lot of these turns. The apex is a concrete wall. You just sort of have to aim your car there and hope you don't hit it. Look at six. And you don't get to see what's coming. We can't, if we can't see those cars coming down the straightaway before the turn, it means they can't see what's beyond the turn. JF Laberge in the number 19, the first down pit lane. And there you see problems for the Napa number 80, a new look race car for your points leader, Raphael Lassard, but he's off in that runoff area in turn number six. They've been struggling a little bit with the balance on that car, the brakes on that car all weekend long, so Raphael Lassard not having the luck that he wanted to coming in here, the points leader to this event. Good news, the lap takes a long time, over a minute here at the Grand Prix de Trois Rivières, so he's a long time to get it righted and tag back onto the tail of the field. Mark Antoine Cameron has pulled away a little bit from Alex Tagliani, closing that gap on race leader LP Dumoulin. There's another one of those concrete apexes, a 90 degree turn onto the long back straightaway here at Trois Rivières, which is neither straight nor flat. <laughs> Lots of elevation. We can see them working the bumps under braking. And we can tell you the 17 of DJ Kennington and Castro Edge Dodge also down pit lane for his scheduled stop. We'll bring you back to the streets of Trois Rivières. Welcome back to Trois Rivières for the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. Pit road is busy. Mandatory fuel stop for the 52 of Alex Gannett. The fuel goes in, gallons are flowing in, very fast stop, Alex Gannett is away. And there you can see it doesn't take much time to get the fuel they need to make it the extra 10 laps. But your, your points of risk on the pit stop are, first, you've got to get to your pit box, not going over pit road speed limit, but not slowing down too much. And we've seen in years gone by when we've had a pit stop, some of the drivers have left with the fuel containers stuck in there, so that's a penalty as well. You need to avoid those penalties. You got ahead of me, Dave. You got to stop in your box without slowing down too much, but don't go past the line or you can't service the car. The fuel person has to engage the fuel can. Now make your point. Don't leave the pit box with the fuel can still in, and don't stall the car. They're very easy to stall. So more drivers heading down pit lane from fifth spot. The other car from Rick Ware Racing, driven by Andrew Ranger. Todd? Follow the leader here, the DJK and Rick Ware Racing teams following one another. That's the 51 of Andrew Ranger. Fuel is in, he's down and away. You see the tire spin on Ranger. You've got to get the RPMs up, spin those tires a bit, but then back out of the throttle to get some traction as you head out of the pits. Everybody following this early pit stop strategy. That's the three of Brett Taylor. It'll be the same situation. Quick fuel stop. They are making a handling adjustment as well. He's done. Ray Kudermash Jr. back in the series for a limited run this year. Again, down and away. Fuel is done. Ray stalls the car. Now he's got it going and fires off. And there's that problem. You try to eliminate problems on pit lane. You saw Ray Cordemas Jr. stall it just for a split second, but that leads to so much time on the racetrack. It doesn't sound like much, but you see LP Dumlin, your race leader, the distance between him and Kevin Lacroix in fourth, that's about how much that stall would cost, probably 100 feet on the racetrack or more. On board with Kyle Marcelli in the Simcoe Building Center, APC Ford, he'll come down pit lane. 
And you can see he finds his box, the seven sign waving in front of him, but he's got to go back. He's over the line at the front of the pit box. And I, I didn't hear if that car was still running, unless, unless we weren't picking up the sound there. So I don't know if he stalled on pit road, but there's a problem. More problems for LaBerge in the number 19, the Dago Bar. Chevrolet is sitting crossways in turn number six. No caution just yet. It is just a localized caution as LaBerge tries to find a gear and try to find a way out of the path of everybody who's coming. You're doing your competitors a favor by sitting still. I'm sure it doesn't feel good for LaBerge, but a moving target is harder to avoid than a stationary target. Does a great job, finds reverse. And look at Mark Antoine Cameron. Yeah, the leader yet to pit. Mark Antoine Cameron is yet to pit, but the lead battle is starting to heat up. You can almost throw Alex Tagliani into that battle as well in the 18. He's not too far back. That entire top five right there. And any mistake by anyone in the top five is going to lead to opportunity for somebody as we look back at Mark Antoine Cameron in his office doing his work. We don't make a big enough deal of it anymore, but Cameron's still the winningest driver in the history of GP3R. It's funny, I was going to say the same thing because he did pick up a checkered flag already this weekend, winning the 10-lap dash for cash in the Chevrolet Urban Challenge in one of those dirt modifieds. Qualified on pole for the final, unfortunately put out in the first turn. Ah, what a shame. He must also have the record for winning in more different kinds of cars here because he's raced a lot of different race cars at GP3R. He seems to just go fast in whatever he gets in, including this Paye Chevrolet, the number 22, hounding the race leader now. From 20 year Quebec, LP Dumoulin has led since the drop of the green. Still nobody in the top five electing to come into the pits. I'm a little surprised that Kevin Lacroix, maybe J.F. Dumoulin back there, come in quick, force the hand of the cars in front of you. Into lap traffic, there is T.J. Renamato in the two giving the leaders lots of space as he pulls to the outside in turn number one. Does the best he can. That's the problem with Crawford and Poitier. You've got walls on both sides. There's really no place to run it high. No, there's really not. It's challenging to overtake. So, oh, trouble. Trouble. Mark Antoine Cameron. Lot of smoke from the back end of the Paye Chevrolet, the number 22 from second place. And you can see Cameron just sort of look at the roof as obviously disappointing. He's still able to move. And the engine's still running, but heavy, heavy smoke now as he pulls to the side. There goes Trayton Lapsovich. Simone Zionvien goes by as well. Yeah, the engine is running. He's in eight gear. So I'm not sure what might have failed on Cameron there. Well, you saw him searching down the back straightaway for a gear. He was moving the shifter back and forth. So likely searching for a gear i thought he might have just been beating on it <laughs> that <was> frustration <laughs> could very well be he had a very good car in the early stages of this race so he'll find pit lane in the 22 and we stay under green with your leader still lb dumoulin now alex tag and kevin lacroix make up the top three next time we get that look at lb dumoulin look at how relaxed his hands are on that steering wheel like I would be choking the life out of that steering wheel going those speeds. Into pit lane and you can see the crew looking to go to work but now trying to knock that car out of gear. So there's no intensity there. It's likely that his day is going to finish early. Yeah, they were going to jack it up, tried to push it. Now they're going to jack it up again. But either way, Mark Antoine Cameron's opportunity for victory has disappeared. There we see the native of Trois-Rivières, Quebec, in his playground, in his own backyard, out in front here as he'll click off lap number 12 and down pit lane. Another one of those front runners, Kevin Lacroix, from third spot will find his pit box, and that's where we'll find Todd Lewis. Todd? The 74 of Kevin Lacroix hits his marks to over the wall. Into the back of that car, fuel is flowing. They've got enough. He's on his way. 
And you can see that the fuel man with a bit of trouble, like that's a heavy can that they've got. You've got to line it up directly with the fuel filler hose or the, the fuel filler cap and engage that fuel can. And you're dealing with a little bit of adrenaline too because for the fuel man, you know this is your time to shine. You need to do everything right because potentially your race depends on it. And I don't know if I want to talk about it, but normally you get yellow flags. And, and yellows are more common right after the start, right after a restart. We haven't had that. So once you start to see a race go green for a little while, it's not surprising to think this could go green all the way. You can see the 18 of Alex Tagliani no longer there behind your race leader, the 47, as Tagliani makes his scheduled stop. Two-time winner here at Trois-Rivières, Alex Tagliani with the stop along pit road. It's for fuel. The fuel is flowing out of the can. They've got just about enough, and he is on his way. The 22 team right behind him remains at work. It is a clutch problem, they believe, for Mark Antoine Cameron. Rafael Lazard managing to stay ahead of LP Dumoulin for the time being. Yeah, remember, he was your points leader coming into this event. Back-to-back -back wins at Sunset Speedway. LP Dumoulin came into this one second in points. And you can see Dumoulin just gobble up the distance on the 80 of Lazard heading down into what, what is probably the heaviest brake zone on the whole circuit. Yeah, there's a few really good passing opportunities here on this 11-turn circuit. Turn number one, turn six, and right here into turn number eight. The other thing I want to watch when we go on board with LP Dumlin, he's headed for pit road. You can see him tuck to the inside wall off of turn number eight. Now he'll hit the speed limit along pit lane. Watching that tack. It's a long drive down pit road. He's got to drive along pit road around a sharp bend. Now he's going to see his pit stall come into sight. The race leader gives up his spot to make his mandatory pit stop for fuel. LP Dumoulin has it pointed towards pit out. The crew cleans the grill. The fuel is going in. They've got enough now. They push him and get him started. He's on his way. But have a look at the leaderboard on the left of your screen. Young Trayton Lapsovich running for Rookie of the Year honors is now your race leader. His first ever time in a race on a road course. This game's easy. <laughs> <laughs> and Trayton Lapsovich is an avid eye racer as well, but of note, the Grand Prix of Trois Rivières is not on eye racing, but he's got a lot of laps on a simulator. He's a natural talent for sure. And we should give a call out to Simone Dion Vienne and that Castrol number 37 doing a really nice job as well. Prepared out of the Dave Jacobs shop with support of Dave Jacobs here today. Simone Dion Vienne as a top 10 in the NASCAR Vinti series before. He's having a great run sitting in second chasing laps of it right now. The other thing I notice in LP Doomlin, because I'm sure we'll go on board again, I want you to watch his hand on the shifter. He changes the direction of his hand depending which way he's shifting, so there's no chance that shifter knob will slip out of his hand. So when he's shifting from first to second is a different position than shifting from second to third and beyond. I've never noticed that before. That's a guy who knows what he's doing, but of course a lot of these drivers racing with heavy hearts here this weekend. Uh, several notable passings in the NASCAR world, including longtime announcer, legendary announcer Bob Jenkins. Rob Morton from Inside Track Motorsports News, also a legend in Canadian motorsports. And uh, Mike Myers from Lancaster, who lost his son as well. So a lot of the drivers thinking of him. It, it, such, such tragedy, all of them really. It, uh, it is a tough time. It is, a matter of fact, Alex Tagliani has a tribute to Rob Morton on that car right beside his name as we have J.F. Dumoulin taking a look underneath the 51 of Andrew Ranger. Dumoulin with the Belmar-sponsored Dodge Challenger. He's, he's tried that move a couple times. Even Ranger have been close, and you see Lapsovich looking for pit lane. That'll hand the lead over to Simone Dion Vienne in that 37 machine. This is a big moment for this young man. Very much so. The driver of the 37 making his first start here in 2021 and already to the lead as Lapsovich finds his box. The youngster, Trayton Lapsovich, wheels that car into pit lane. The probe going in for the fuel stop. They are trying to get that position. Took an extra second. Trayton Lapsovich will have his fuel to take him the distance and get back into the fight. It is a bit of a long stop. They are having problems with that fuel. They do get some in, but how much? That was not a great stop. No, that, that, that 
a little bit of issues trying to get fuel in the car, but hopefully, as Todd mentioned, they did get enough in to go the distance for Trayton Lapsovich. Look at the lead. Simone Zielvien, who is yet to stop, has on the 18 of Alex Tagliani. So Tagliani will get out the fishing rod and try to reel in your leader here in the Guardian Angel 60. Welcome back to the third race of the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series. The Guardian Angels 60 presented by Dermot Tam. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me in the booth is Adam Ross. Todd Lewis is pit side. And Adam, we've got to change for the lead. Alex Tagliani making the move on Simone Dion Vien, which really was going to happen when Dion Vien went into the pit. But that's the difference. LP Dumlin did not have a bad pit stop. But between timing and what lap he chose to come in and tag the inning, be, maybe being a second quicker, it puts tag out front by about 50 yards. Here goes Kevin Lacroix. That's a good pass in turn number nine. So that's not a place we see a lot of passes happen, but Lacroix knows this place very well. He too is a two-time winner of the Grand Prix de 20 Vieres. So the bumper to bumper dodge goes to second. Kevin Lacroix, Alex Tagliani, and Andrew Ranger like to pass people by surprise. They, they will pass in areas that you're not used to seeing people pass in. As Simone Dion Vienne on pit road, looks like a clean stop. He'll take off. Lose a lot of ground to the race leaders, but he should still be in the top ten. That looked like his strategy was to wait until the leader caught up. Then he would head down pit lane, did exactly that, and then Castro Russo Ford Fusion back out on track. And the leader now working lap traffic. There's TJ Rinomato in the number two. As Tagliani finds him, and that's really important here at the Grand Prix de Tuota here. Catching and passing lap traffic at the right opportunity. Catch them in a bad spot, you lose a lot of time. Yeah, and Rinomato letting them go by as Ray Jr. Quartermont's gonna say, I'll take that opportunity. He makes the pass as well as we ride on board. Alex Tagliani continues out in front, now being chased by Kevin Lacroix on the 74. A little bit of a new look to that Rona Viagra, number 18 of Alex Tagliani here for the Grand Prix of 20 Vier in 2021, and he's got it looking good at the front of the field. Tagliani leads. Welcome back to the oldest street circuit in North America and the 51st running of the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières as we pick up a battle for third between the 47 of LP Dumoulin and the 04 of JF Dumoulin and the WeatherTech team now reporting something amiss in that dodge. Yeah, not quite as stout as he was earlier on in this race as we ride on board with LP Dumoulin. He's aware of it because you can see he takes a look in the rearview mirror to find out where his older brother is. J.F. Dumoulin not close enough to make a move in turn number six that time. I wish there was a statistic kept on who is the fastest on old tires because J.F. Dumoulin, whether it's oval or road course, always seems to pick up speed in relation to the cars around him as a race goes on. And there's a driver who hadn't been in the NASCAR Pinty Series car for over a year, but one driver out early is standing by with her Todd Lewis. Todd? Mark Antoine Cameron still musters a smile, but it is a frustrating early end to this day. What happened? Yeah, we have trouble in the in the practice and qualify with the, with the clutch. And, uh, you know, for some reason, the car was really good. And then uh, when I up ship in third on the back straight, I, I hear a huge clunch. And then we lost, uh, lost the gearbox. box. So the car was good. And, I was not, you know, pushing that hard. The GM Paye was uh, was fast, but uh, we're gonna be there at the ICAR. Sorry to see you out early. Talking with Mark Antoine Cameron before today's race, he said the big concern for him today, not necessarily the drive train, it was all about brakes, preserving brakes, preserving tires. He said he had two brake fans per brake on the front end of that race car. Not only have I never heard the sound that Mark Antoine Cameron described, I have never heard the description of the sound that he had. That was fantastic. Like, I could almost envision it when he said it. You could tell what was going on. As we see now, the battle for top spot is starting to narrow at the front of the field. Tagliani from Lachenay, Quebec, is leading St. Eustache's Kevin Lacroix. I was going to say that earlier on, too. We talked about Lacroix having trouble. They had to make repairs on the race car after qualifying yesterday. He drives every lap on the track at a little bit more than 100%. 
and it's so exciting. He's so very good once in a while. We saw it at Toronto Indy a couple of years ago. We see it here this weekend. Once in a while, it, it bites him, but they always manage to get the car back together. Don Thompson Jr. and that crew, they do a heck of a job. Worth saying, too, he was third quickest in practice, but he was not phased by that at all. He said, we were lurking, working on long runs and this race has played out in his favor it's been all long runs so far 24 laps under green 24 laps in larry jackson and then o'neill electric supply milwaukee tool number 84 is about to go a lap down to alex tagliani he's turning reasonable lap times out there and this is a larry jackson style of race he maintains his equipment he doesn't punish it but uh about to go a lap down, and that could be unfortunate for the driver from Oakville, Ontario. Big chatter in the paddock area was just keeping your nose clean because typically, as you mentioned, this race does tend to get a little dicey at times, so you run the risk of damaging your fenders, your nose, maybe even knocking the wheels out of, out of alignment, so trying to keep your car in one piece, but everybody's done an exemplary job of that so far. Well, what's going to happen later this year? We go to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. If there's debris, or even if there's an accident, it quite often goes off the racetrack and away you go. No matter what happens here at GP3R, it's not going far. It's going to bounce between the walls and wind up somewhere on the racing surface. So you do get a few more yellows at GP3R than we do at any other road course we visit. And those walls, too, another reason. It's been so hot here this weekend. Another reason why Mark Antoine Cameron was saying they're worried about temperatures in the brakes because it sort of gets trapped in that concrete jungle between the two walls, and there's no real wind to get it out of the way to help cool these cars down. Larry Jackson gets up out of the way. These teams have been doing this for so long, coming here with basically the same package in these race cars. That they know every trick. They know mm. what they need to do to keep the, the temperatures as cool as they can in the brakes. Kevin Lacroix trying to make a move to the inside, take advantage of the slower car, Larry Jackson. But Jackson did a good job to get well out of the way, and Tag did a good job to not leave any opportunity. But Tag overshot turn two. They open the door, and here comes Lacroix. Will he force it into turn three through the Duplessis gates? No. Lacroix backs off. He almost made a liar out of me. I said we won't see passes in turn three because it's a treacherous place. He almost kept that nose in there, did not push the issue. Cost him a few car lengths, but I think just the sheer frustration will close him back in on Tagliani. If that was lap 59 of 60, you would have seen a different Kevin Lacroix through turn number three. Oh, for sure. He, he wouldn't have lifted there, and they both would have been sideways, and the <laughs> adventure would be on. Daglietti continues in front, although he's got some company in Kevin Lacroix here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. Alex Daglietti continues to lead, opening up a little bit more of a gap here in the Guardian Angels 60 at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. This is a battle between brothers for third spot in the final step on the podium. Yeah, LP Dumoulin still holding off his brother JF, and again, this is a JF race. He's got the leaders in his sight. He's doing better the last few years of qualifying. It used to be so frustrating for me, for JF, because qualifying was a struggle. And by the time he'd get in position, he'd, he'd used himself up. He's doing a better job now. He's still got the leaders in his sight. We're about to get to the halfway point. You watch for JF Dumoulin as this race wears on. Predominantly working as a team manager for Dumoulin Competition and a driver coach as well. A mentor is JF Dumoulin. But every once in a while, he straps the helmet back on, and he doesn't forget to go fast. He really doesn't, and he's got the look of a race car driver, the walk of a race car driver. Confidence is key, and both Dumoulin brothers have that. And again, it's their home track. They've got fans in the stands. they got family and friends here. They want to put on a good showing, and they have that little extra spring in their step when they're walking around this track. You can see it. But LB Dumoulin opening up a little bit over his brother and a battle that's closing in is this battle for the lead. Tagliani has the spot. Kevin Lacroix back to within about two car lengths of our race leader. You can see the top two made it through lap traffic with TJ Rinomato in the RGC number two. And problems for the number three, the TCB trailers. 
Fast Eddie Speedwear, number three of Brett Taylor off the pace down the back straightaway. He's down to a crawl. There was an opportunity there to get to that runoff area and make the hard left. He did not take it. Brett Taylor still out on the back straightaway. I don't know where the next opportunity is to exit the racetrack, but I don't think he's going fast enough to get there. No, it would have to be the runoff area in turn number six. And you're right, I don't think he's going with enough pace to reach that point yet. So we are at the halfway mark. 30 laps in of a scheduled 60, and we do have a full course caution, our first one of this 60-lap event. Dan Hawkins waving the yellow flag while at the same time giving the halfway signal. And you can see a little bit deeper in the pack, you see Lassard and Larry Jackson almost coming together off of turn number 11 as they come to caution those two drivers racing for the free pass position. And really, that free pass spot was determined the previous lap when they go back through electronic scoring, but it still feels good to battle your way to it. Good look at some of the fans here. You see, under normal circumstances, this place would be packed. This is as packed as we're allowed to have it in a COVID world. But we'll be back for more from 20 Air Quebec. Welcome back to NASCAR Racing on TSN. This race is brought to you by... Quick, quick the world's number one fire starter. By WeatherTech, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. By Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. And by Sunbelt, when you're ready to tackle that large job or weekend project, turn to sunbeltrentals.com for all your equipment needs. The driver whose misfortune brought out this yellow is with Todd Lewis. Brett Taylor has climbed out of that number three car, and you can just see the disappointment on his face, Brett. Looks like it was transmission or some sort of gear problems that's put you on. Yeah, it's the transmission. It is what it is. It's racing, I guess, but, you know, it could be uh, worse days. I'm here racing in beautiful Three Rivers. Got a uh, fast Eddie, TCB, and winging at restaurants supporting me, so wish I could have had a better turnout for them, but it is what it is. We'll get them next time. Thanks, Brett. Now, he was confident coming into this event, was hoping for possibly a top 10 finish here on the streets of 20. Vier, unfortunately, won't end that way. Kyle Marcelli, though, sitting nicely in the top 10 right now. Having a good ride, and we talked about it earlier, Dave. Cautions breed cautions. This is a moment for Kyle Marcelli where he hasn't had the mayhem of an NASCAR restart. He had the original start. Restarts are a little bit different because drivers already have their blood pressure up. They know what they're here to do. Speaking of Marcelli, he leaned on his sports car friends, Austin Sindrick from the NASCAR world, Andy Lally, giving him some advice on how to maintain these cars and not wear them out too quickly. And so far, it seems to be working. Off of turn number one, Tagliani with a good start, but Kevin Lacroix is not going to let him close the door. Lacroix with a great run off of turn two. That time, Lacroix will lead him through turn number three. There's no side-by-side -side battle needed as you see the rest of the field coming through sideways. J.F. Dumoulin sneaks up to the third spot. A couple of car lengths back to L.P. Dumoulin in the WeatherTech 47. J.F. has a look to the inside of Tagliani. Tagliani lays down the block. I thought we were going to fan out three wide for just a second there. Tagliani and Dumoulin racing side by side, allowing your leader to open a bit of a breathing space at the front of the field. On board the Moto Illimité number 52 of Alex Gannett. You know what I like about the blocks in our series? It, it's one. You, you sort of go to the inside, let the driver behind you know, hey, I'm going to defend this. Then the driver can decide if they want to push it and go way lower. But you don't see a lot of the snaking down a straightaway as you do in some other forms of motorsports. Yeah, and sometimes when you do block, you get punished by the other driver who's trying to make that pass. That tends to happen sometimes, too. But at least, right, and at least with one block, you know what's going on. When you make more than one block, it's like, okay, I don't like this anymore. And that's when you see the bumping, in my experience. Look at how close they come to that exit wall off turn number three. Look at DJ Kennington. Castro Edge 17, just quietly, quietly there, just out of the top five. Simon Dion Vien doing a great job. He's in the seventh or eighth spot. He's either one spot behind DJ or two spots behind, two spots behind, because Kyle Marcelli is directly behind Kennington. Yeah, DJ Kennington, I mentioned in practice, he was really comfortable with the car, and then in qualifying was super jazzed about his time, but unfortunately, L.B. Dumoulin laid down our new track record. 
Creighton Lasovich just overtook Alice Gannett for position. You have to remember, too, that the driver of the 17, DJ Kennington, scoring one of his biggest wins of his career, coming right here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. As I recall, he passed Jacques Villeneuve to earn that victory. Yeah, that was a pretty neat deal, and definitely a tra uh, trophy that he cherishes. Is he's coming under pressure, though, from young Kyle Marcelli. Now that I think of it, it may have been Kennington's least popular victory ever. <laughs> you pass a Villeneuve at GP3R and go back to take the win, but, but it was a beautiful move. Just love hearing these NASCAR Pinty Series cars at song down this long Boulevard du Caramel straight away into turn number six. Marcelli does the same thing with his gear shifter that I was looking at LP. Look, he'll go backhand to go from second to third. If he, yep, the same way he did last time, probably backhand again. But when he goes down, he'll open that hand up. Interesting, so as to not grab the wrong gate of gear when you're going up through the gears or back down. So maybe that's a road racing thing that I wasn't aware of. Let's have a look at this replay. That's Dexter Stacy up on the outside getting used up off a of turn two. Luke Lesage in the number 25, LP Montour in the Kamloop 07. Montour is another driver we haven't had a chance to talk about much here today. A veteran of the Trans Am series. He's been running some sports car championship series here in Canada as well, but looking very much at home behind the wheel of a NASCAR Pinty series car just outside the top 10 sitting in 12. The other Louis Philippe. <laughs> Running out of Dumoulin Competition as well. So you know that car is well prepared and he was well prepared for this race and it looks like we have a challenge for the race lead the rona viagra number 18 of alex tagliani looked to the inside couldn't make it stick and kevin lacroix left that lane open he either drove too deep in the turn to make the turn or he left the lane open knowing that tagliani might push the issue and ran the outside but this time lacroix in trouble he has pushed up out of the groove setting up in turn eight now to the inside in turn number nine so the driver's using that hairpin turn as a passing opportunity here today in the Guardian Angels 60 presented by Dermatair. Passes are so hard to come by when the competition is at such an elite level. I don't think we've seen the end of this. Riding him on board the WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin. And you can see whatever issues he had underneath the hood of that Dodge seems to have no, at least not gotten any worse than it was earlier. Yeah, he seems to be competitive at this point. He is a little bit back from that top three, but still well in the mix. He's fallen back, though, and surprising to see. You'll see the purple nose of Andrew Ranger is back in the clutches of DJ Kennington, former teammates, and Kyle Marcelli, Simon Zionvien in there, too, and around goes Ranger. Yeah, I was just going to say, you don't often see Ranger get out right. Trying to think of the proper English way to say that, but I think I got it right. Something amiss on the 51 of Ranger. Let's have another look. He's way too far in the braking zone for that to be a wheel hop and sending that car around. So it looks like this could be an issue on the Rickware Racing number 51. He just locked it up. He was able to keep it off the wall, just touched that tire wall there, but his hopes have disappeared for a victory for the moment. Anything can happen, but that is an unfortunate circumstance for Andrew Ranger. Jocelyn Fecto in the Golf Rider Coffee number 77 is just ahead of the leader as Andrew Ranger heads down pit lane. So he was in the top five, and now he finds himself looking for service. Some slower traffic for these race leaders. The top four all get around cleanly. And that's important, as we mentioned, getting around down the straightaway so you don't get boxed up in the corners. And that can close a gap very, very quickly if you catch a lap car at the wrong time. Yeah, you have to be able to get on the throttle at the same rate as everybody around you. It just, the difference in speed is so much greater at the end of a straightaway when you haven't been able to get on the throttle at the same time as your competition at the start of a straightaway. Fecto in the 77 though doing a very good job at keeping an eye on that rear view mirror for when those lead lap cars come up behind him but one of the favorites coming into the event here today a four time winner of the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivière is sitting down pit lane he's out of this one Todd. 
guys, the 51 of Andrew Ranger got turned around out on course, just spun all by himself, and now stopped along pit road. The crew went underneath the hood. They are refilling the brake cylinder reservoir, and it looks like that might be the problem, is lack of... 60 presented by Derma Term. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross, and this is a battle now between DJ Kennington and Kyle Marcelli that is really heating up just outside the top five. Couple of the classic car owners, Dave Jacobs, the owner of the number seven, DJ Kennington, owner of the 17. These teams have been battling since the series started in 07. Think about the drivers who have started with Dave Jacobs as well. Andrew Ranger, you had Jacques Villeneuve, you mentioned him a little bit earlier. Alex LeBay is now running in the Xfinity series. Alex Tagliani. Indeed. A lot of drivers in the Pinty series, and now Kyle Marcelli making his name as he'll stick a pass on the inside of turn number six in the Simcoe Building Center's Ford Fusion. He's looking more and more comfortable every lap as Kyle Marcelli. And look at your points leader set to go a lap down. He pulled to the outside. Tagliani will make his way through, but earlier Todd caught up with Tony Spiteri from Pinty's. Tony, I just want to ask you quickly about the season so far, the NASCAR Pinty Series. We've seen great competition. I know you are super fond of this event, and you you were you're so supportive of the teams and this event. And how important is this for Pinty's, for Ole Mel, and your product and your brand? Wow, I mean, you're exactly right, Todd. To be home really is so close to home for us. Uh, Boucherville and Tri Riviera, about an hour and a half away. We probably have two, three hundred staff here, socially distanced, of course. Um, Twenty-three cars to start. Uh, I'm talking to teams about the requests for more cars. Uh, I, we couldn't be happier, and the support we get from the teams—they're uh, they're our best brand ambassadors, as you can, as you know, as you know well. You've seen the the series and this this event last year, of course, was super challenging. But this year, we we've, we've got basically a full schedule, and in, in addition, the fields are bigger than we've seen too. It's it's a positive momentum that's being gained by Pinties and the NASCAR Pinties. Yeah, I mean, Todd, on, on top of the gains, what's really interesting is I have veterans telling me this is the toughest field I've ever had to play in. When you get people like Ranger and Tagliani saying this is a very tough field, I've got rookies saying I just ran door to door with Andrew Ranger, with Rafael Lassard. So it's this, what's beautiful about our series is that we've got this kind of cross pollination happening of, of you know, up and comers and wily veterans couple of those wily veterans at the front of the field right now and we thank Tony Spiteri for all he does for the NASCAR Pinty Series and Alex Tangliani now has two drivers who have caught up to him as the 04 of JF Dumoulin has joined this party at the front. It's his time we're getting down to the closing stages JF Dumoulin is turning laps a little bit faster than the two race leaders in front of him. And you see those issues may have reared their heads again for the 47 WeatherTech Don to Bell P. Dumoulin. He's lost touch from this group, still holding on to fourth spot though. And that's important in the points challenge and we have trouble now for the 52 of Alex Gannett off in turn number eight and he'll head automatically down pit lane. Trying to listen to see if we can hear anything amiss on the Gannett number 52 machine. Doesn't seem to be even he did come to a rest up against the tire wall in turn number eight, but not a lot of damage to the Rick Ware Racing Moto Limite number 52 as he rolls to a stop in his pit stall. In fact, the crew, it almost seems they didn't know immediately where to go to on that 52. So when they go to the driver's window, trying to get word on what might be going on in the 52 machine. Meanwhile, out on the racetrack, J.F. Dumoulin looks to be a little quicker than Kevin Lacroix, sticking that nose to the 0-4 machine anywhere he can to try to find a spot where he can make an advance. And I was going to say this is turning into a three-horse race just outside the Hippodrome of Trois-Rivières as J.F. Dumoulin now ducks to the inside and look at that door close. The gentleman move of Kevin Lacroix from earlier in the race. Now we're fighting for every position because the gloves are starting to come off. They are, but you know what? Kevin Lacroix knows he's breaking deeper than anybody. He did the same thing earlier to Alex Tagliani. That's confidence in knowing I know how far you can break into this turn. You know why he knows that, Dave? Because he spun out in that turn before <laughs> and crashed the car, so he knows how far he can't go into that turn. And by, by going gently into the turns early in the race, you end up saving your stuff, like your brakes, like your tires, for later on and when it counts the most, like right now with 11 laps to go. 
the maturation process of Kevin Lacroix has been a lot of fun to watch. Uh, he reminds me of J.R. Fitzpatrick, who came in as a, an untamable cowboy. And by the end, he had, he had figured things out. He knew how to win races. Kevin Lacroix is that kind of fun. Takes his lumps, always gives a good interview. I mean, there's a lot of similarities there. Very much so. Jocelyn Fecto once again in the 77 pulls to the outside down the straightaway. So that eliminates that opportunity for the Belmar 04 of J.F. Dumoulin to get a run on the inside of the bumper to bumper dodge of Kevin Lacroix that time. But still, look at the three car battle. Tagliani, Lacroix, and Dumoulin, your top three. Tagliani has to be thrilled with what's going on right now. He wants to see more of the white front end of J.F. because he knows that means J.F. keeps making moves and Kevin Lacroix will be preoccupied. Lacroix got a little bit offline there. Turn 10 is a tough place to make a move, and J.F. Dumoulin knows that, so they're tucking the line behind the 74 of Lacroix down the front straightaway they go. 11 laps to go right now. They're on lap 50 out of 60, so J.F., as calm as he's been throughout this race, as calculated he's, as he's been, he knows he's got to make his move fairly soon because it doesn't look like a great distance to tag me any, but these drivers will be holding nothing back for the next 10 and a half laps. You know what's interesting, too, as they battle side by side, nose to tail, they're not losing that much ground. So the race leader, Alex Tagliani's, held that gap pretty much the same for the last five laps or so. But you look, Tagliani's not stressing the car like Lacroix under braking into that turn. He just doesn't have that pressure. One driver who's out of this one is standing by with our Todd Lewis pit side. Todd. Alex Cadet with me climbing out of the car. You looked like you were having yourself a pretty steady run, but is it a brake issue that's put you out? Yeah, once again, brake strike out for us again. Uh, we were driving it real smooth, you know, I think we were P7 there. Uh, just coasting with DJ and Andrew, everything was going fine to that point, and then brakes started to go more and more, and there's no sense for me to be out there and wreck one of these guys. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, guys. Almost wrecked himself, too, going into turn number eight, so that's why he immediately pulled down pit lane, because, like he says, there's no point. How quickly things change. Kevin Lacroix reeling in the race leader. We didn't see them go around Ray Jr. quarter much. Oh, trouble. Kyle Marcelli in the number seven. He was in fifth spot off the pace. This is the front straightaway. And right on board with the Simcoe Building Center's number seven. Off turn 11. Ooh, something broke. You can see him hit the curbing on the inside of turn 11, and then the car just snaps. That looks like a flat tire or the fact that we're going yellow could be an axle come out, a broken axle on the back of that number seven, but that doesn't explain the yellow. Well, we're hearing debris on the racetrack right now, so that is the cause for the caution here with seven laps to go. So in what's been predominantly a green flag affair, and there you see that debris, and you're right, <laughs> that an is axle. The, so when the axle breaks, you saw the car lurch when he'd hit the gas. It means only one of the rear tires is driving, so it wants to spin. Quite often, you will break the axle, and it won't come flying out the rear end. Sometimes it does come out the rear end. Look at Kevin Lacroix trying to get some cool air into the driver's compartment as we set up for a hot finish here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. We're setting up for a short dash to the finish here in the Guardian Angel 60, presented by Dermot Terme at the Grand Prix of Tuati Vieira. Beautiful day for a race, and the fans are going to be treated for an exciting end to this one. Yeah, the field stacks up, scrubbing those general tires. You can see the quick, quick, hottest lap of the race, J.F. Dumoulin, so he's quickest. And we've noticed that, the 04 Belmar Dodge has been coming and he'll restart in the third position. And you know that'll be nice for J.F. Dumoulin but really the reward is right there. There are two cars between him and the top step of the podium. You see who's just outside of the top five, the 20. The rookie, Trayton Lapsovich, sitting in six in the quick wick Chevrolet. So what can he do with these final few laps here under green as the pace car Pulls in, we're set to get back at it. Here on the streets of Trois-Rivières, Quebec. 
Alex Tagliani and Kevin Lacroix. The green flag waves a little bit later than I was anticipating off turn 11. Kevin Lacroix got a good run down into the corner, smoked the brakes. What an opportunity for Alex Tagliani to clear out in front. Jay up from the outside trying to work on second. Mentioned how far Kevin Lacroix has been driving and into turn number one. He manages to hold on to second spot as a number of other cars come piling through. Yeah, there was a lot of bumper tag going down into the corner there as they worked down this back straightaway. Alex Tagliani with a good advantage. Here we said Lacroix laid one block down. JF says, I see your block and I raise you bonsai. Wow, side by side off of turn number six up against the tire wall and they'll drag race down to the kink that is turn seven. That was a move. That was fun to watch. Still, they're making this move into turn number eight and it's going to be Lacroix up on the outside. J.F. Dumoulin still keeping the nose of that 0-4 where he wants it. Lacroix gets a little squirrely there under braking. Give the second spot to J.F. Dumoulin. Two heavyweight prize fighters trading blow after blow in the final rounds of this race. The leader is Alex Tagliani. You see him way off in the distance with three laps to go. And Lacroix, that car does not look happy under braking for Kevin Lacroix. J.F. Dumoulin has got a bit of a gap out from the 74, but it's a long way to go to reach the 18-year tag the Andy. Somebody forgot to tell young Trayton Lapsovich that he's never raced in one of these races before on a road or street circuit in an intimidating place like 20 year Quebec as he's battling now with two-time race winners, Kevin Lacroix and L.B. Dumoulin. Dumoulin to the inside, contact with Lacroix, and Lacroix comes back on the inside. Wow, contact these cars sideways. Dumoulin battling for third, drops back to fifth. Now into the clutches of the 17 of DJ Kennington. Two Castrol cars there, actually, is Simon Ziovian in there as well. They're filling the rear view mirror of the 47 WeatherTech Dodge. You're not kidding. I think DJ Kennington could have pressed that issue a little bit more, but he got in line, gave LP a chance to get up to speed. It also protected DJ from being overtaken by Simone Dion Vienne. So a little bit of offense, a little bit of defense. Now look at Lapsovich trying to get a toe down the front straightaway. Two laps to go this time by. Lapsovich not close enough to make a move, but you're right, the 74 bumper to bumper dodge of Kevin Lacroix not able to hold as tight into turn number one as we saw earlier on in this race. The car just doesn't look stable under braking. It looks like the back end wanting to dance around. J.F. Dumoulin has driven away from the 74, but Alex Tagliani still with great pace in that Rona Viagra number 18. So LP Dumoulin rounds out the top five, but how about LP Montour sitting inside the top ten? Luc Lesage in there as well. All benefactors of this late race shuffle and this late race restart. Amazing what we're seeing is Trayton Lapsovich pouring the pressure on Kevin Lacroix. Alex Tagliani about to see the white flag. Tagliani had a huge lead, but that lead is slowly going away with the Belmar 04 of J.F. Dumoulin setting sail. Will he catch him here on this final lap? He's got a long way to go, but second place is his. He has climbed away from Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix looking in the rear view mirror. A couple of black cars looking to get onto the podium. This is the battle we are watching right now. Lapsovich and Dumoulin chasing the number 74 from St. Eustache, Quebec of Kevin Lacroix in through turn number three. This is so important to get on the throttle clean that you can see Trayton Lapsovich left a lot of room between himself and the wall there. He has been keeping that car as straight and square as anybody on the racetrack. Might hurt his momentum down this back straightaway, unable to make a move. You saw LP Dumoulin either take a blocking maneuver or take a look to the inside, hoping Trayton Lapsovich might make an error. Final lap under braking, it didn't happen. That's how you race a rookie. You give them lots to look at in their mirror, but Trayton Lapsovich, he is eyes forward trying to find a chink in the armor of Kevin Lacroix. Can he get a run into turn number nine? We've seen passes happen there before. Not that time, as there is your race leader, the 18 Rona Viagra Chevrolet of Alex Tagliani, now a three-time winner here at 20 Air Quebec. J.F. Dumoulin with a spirited drive to come home second. Kevin Lacroix rounds out the podium. Trayton Lapsovich with an impressive fourth. L.P. Dumoulin rounding out the top five. 
Smoky Donuts for the winner here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. Alex Tagliani, a dominant run in the late stages of this one. Had a great restart, refired strong, left them behind him battling. Todd is with his crew chief. This is Matt Shoulder. He is the crew chief today for Alex Tagliani. How does it feel victorious in your first time out as a crew chief? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I didn't know what to do when I got put in this position, and I said, took full force and great opportunity. 22 racing is awesome to work for. The guys around here are spectacular. They do an awesome job to put the cards we do here, and it's it's unbelievable. We're, we finally put it in victory lane here again. We'll celebrate with your drive. Thank you. Almost lost for words, and this will be a popular victory amongst the fans here in Quebec. One of their native sons, as we've had a little fireworks happen after the flag. We'll be back from 20 Vier. Welcome back to 20 Vier, Quebec, where Alex Tagliani is parked in victory lane for the third time here in his career, his 10th time in the NASCAR Pinty Series. <laughs> Fritz making sure Alex doesn't come crashing down from the door of his car as he celebrates. And we, we've talked about it and talked about it. This is such a big event, particularly if you're a Quebecois driver. Tell me it's not hard to drive a race car. You can see Alex Tagliani physically exhausted. Here's a look at your top 10. Louis-Philippe Montour, Luc Lesage, Dexter Stacy all coming home in top 10. And I'm super happy for Simone Dion Vienne, who was in contention all day long. Larry Jackson with a solid 11th place. But the man of the hour, he's with Todd Lewis right now. Alex Tagliani once again on the podium here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. We talked this morning, and you had concerns about this car and about this race. They all went away. Tell me about that pass that you set up for several laps to get you the lead. Yeah, first of all, uh, a huge congrats to the team. Uh, the 22 racing team, they they believed we had something going on. Sometimes it's not easy because we had a car in, in second and fourth. You know, it's not too shabby, but uh, looking deeper, we saw that we had something that was not right. And uh, to their effort, you know, grinding, working last night, to this, this morning, we know they changed everything. We don't know what, what it was, but uh, finally we got a car to compete. And uh, so huge thank you for them. And uh, yeah, the, you know, the pass was, uh, was just a tribute of uh, having a good car. And uh, I really didn't have to push so hard to, uh, to stay behind the leaders. And uh, at the right time, I just went for it. And uh, after that was just managing. Alex Tagliani for the third time, the winner here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. Congratulations. Said he was exhausted. He doesn't look tired at all. Not a drop of sweat on his face. And, you know, he is an athlete. He trains very hard for this, and it paid off. He's one point shy of points leader Rafael Lussard. And the fast Eddie speed where point standings shaken up here after round number three in 20 Vier, Quebec. Let's head down to your second place finisher. Arguably, J.F. Dumoulin may be the most popular second place finisher ever here at the Grand Prix de Trois Rivières. What a nice move you made to set up that pass and take the second position. Yeah, it was a really good restart, a bit aggressive, but that's what it is. I was really patient with him earlier on the, the race. I thought if I could have passed him earlier, maybe I had a chance with Tag at the end there because I had a really quick car. Tu me l'as compétition, my Belmar, Nifab, Daniel Crapo, Trois, Yamit, Mitsubishi Machine was really, really good. So, uh, second place now, third last year. Now we need to get the first one next year. Congratulations, JF. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Pleased with his run for sure, and the fans pleased with a very exciting NASCAR Pinty Series race here today. Our third place finisher, Todd's caught up with him. Kevin Lacroix, your team worked so hard to get that car ready for you. You fought to get up front, then you had to fight to hold on to a podium position. Tell me about that battle with JF. Well, it all started. Uh, I, I was having a little tra transmission issue. Uh, so right here on the first corner at the restart, I, I went on neutral, and that's not what you want. You, uh, we use the engine to break the car. And uh, when I put it back in gear in the middle of the corner, I went by uh, backwards, uh, not sideways, I mean, and... Uh, uh, G uh, LP after that, he just, uh, you know, bumped uh, really hard a few times, uh, so didn't help the case uh, to, you know, I was trying to concentrate on uh, getting back the spots I lost and uh, going to fight for the win, and then I kept being bumped so, uh, on that lap. So uh, I took him out of the way, uh, as uh, we do in the car, and uh, I tried to catch up the leads, and uh, th that did not happen, but, uh, no, we're, we're happy with the third with uh, 
you know, the car that we had today with the teamwork very hard uh, after my mistake in qualifying yesterday. And, you know, uh, that's all we can do. I think uh, it's it's better than I was expecting. So very happy. Great job. Thank you. I told you, Dave, Kevin Lacroix now takes his lumps, gives his lumps, and then tells you all about it. Hats off, too, to the driver of the number 20, Trayton Lapsovich, a top five in his first road course start here today. Great drive for the youngster. What a drive. I can't wait for our next race weekend. It's going to be another trip to Quebec. Back on a road course as well at Circuit Icar in the Lafleur 75. The Guardian Angels 60 has been brought to you by... Quickwick, the world's number one fire starter. By Total Quartz, keep your engine younger for longer. By Mopar, we built it, we know it. And by Das Metal Studs and Rebar, proud partner of RGC Sports in the NASCAR Pinty Series. An all Quebec podium celebrating on the steps, the inside of turn number one at GP3R. You can't see the smiles, but you know they are there, all three of them on the podium. Big smiles, and how about a champagne shower? Such a celebration, and you know the celebration is going to go on for a long time tonight. And we'd like to say a big thank you to Dominic Fougere and his staff here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières, putting on an event in difficult circumstances but doing it with flying colors. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.